pensions and illegal gambling, not what you'd expect to hear associated with a shopping mall, but those are two allegations contributing to the controversy over at the Boulevard Mall. Now, with exclusive photos, video, and a secret audio recording, Chief Investigator Darcy Spears talks with mall management as she peels back the layers of the Valley's oldest shopping mall. I am a squeaky wheel. When I see something that is wrong, I'm going to point it out. Former mall tenant Matthew Woolbird says becoming a whistleblower cost him his spot at the Boulevard Mall, where he and his partner had a gourmet popcorn kiosk. It was a struggle. Mall traffic is extremely slow. Management kicked him and his business out at the end of October. Two weeks before that, on October 11th, Wolbert and his partner had a meeting with Mall Vice President Timo Kusella. They secretly recorded it to document complaints. I'll be honest with you, I understand the problems are there, but you know, some of it's just not going to change. They also discussed claims that tenants were not being treated equally. The people out there feel like they have been abandoned by the mall because everything is Mercado Mercado. They don't well, understand well, the answer what you this, then If that's the case, why don't they just leave? They talk about their target market. We it's want the Hispanic yeah. customer. That's who of we're course. after. So we make no we make no secrets about that. Okay. You know? And and I understand that. Money is green no matter where it comes from. Right. And it, there's a lot of it in the Hispanic community. A lot of it's cash. Then, Kusella says something that caught Wolbert off guard. Trust me, you don't want the non-Hispanic customers. When he said that, he looked directly at my partner, who is, who is African American. We both took that to mean that you don't want the black business here. What did you mean by that? Um, I don't think I said that, to be he honest with you. He the meeting. Did he? We showed him a transcript. Trust me, you don't want the non-Hispanic customers. So what did you mean by that? Um, well, I, I meant that you know our large marketing strategy is towards the Hispanic customers. And so I was advising him to, and I had advised him in the past to you know, uh, make it appealing for Hispanic customers. Wolbert's last day as a tenant at the mall was October 31st. On our last month, uh, uh, I will admit we withheld, we withheld rent. Um, there was a rat problem, there was roach problems. Uh, there was issues with housekeeping and trash and bathrooms. He documented those conditions over the last month in these photos shared with 13 investigates and the Southern Nevada Health District. Pictures of roaches, damaged bathroom stalls with discarded clothing, doors smeared with feces, and graffiti so graphic we can't show it on TV. Right during and after COVID, we had an influx of homeless people. Um, and that has subsided now. They're also battling rats. You could hear the rats running through the ceilings on the food court. What are you doing about the rats? Um, well, I think uh, if, you, if you look at uh, all around the hallways and everything, you'll find that we have a lot of rat gear, rat traps. Um, and stuff. So we do take a proactive approach to it. They did not take a proactive approach when putting this playground into the food court. The county recently closed it down, deeming it dangerous and unsafe after discovering it was installed without permits, construction documents, or inspections. It was our misunderstanding about the permit uh, process. Tenants we spoke to are also concerned about crime inside the mall. 13 investigates obtained Metro Police records showing 85 calls for service, about two per week from January through early November. As far as an industry standard, that's a pretty low number actually, I will tell you. Um, but zero, or you know, zero is what we'd strive for, of course. Kusella says they're cracking down on retail theft and prosecuting whenever possible. As for mall security, I believe they do a very good job. But when Wolbert questioned it in the meeting, he admitted security could be better. The calls for service to Metro included a person with a gun, juvenile disturbances, fights, theft, malicious destruction of property, fraud, stolen and vandalized cars, burglary, robbery, assault and battery, and this. They usually come in with three or four, sometimes five other people who are kind of running this, this shell game, it's, you know, where you find the marble underneath the, the bottle cap or whatever. Video exclusively obtained by 13 Investigates shows the sleight of hand game in progress where customers bet cash on where the object under the bottle cap will appear. The games constitute illegal gambling and are currently being investigated by the Nevada Gaming Control Board. There's no good excuse for what they're doing, so, you know, that's why they 
try to stay one step ahead of security and, and they're they're all over town, not just here. Kusella says mall security kicks the grifters out a couple times a week. It's pretty brazen that they keep coming back knowing they're not welcome. They must be making some money off your customers. Well, I hope not, but this is the game that they play and they're probably very good at it. So to anybody out there, just don't give money to these guys. This police report from April of this year was filed by a woman who reportedly lost $700. She told police a group of men approached her at the Boulevard Mall stating they wanted to play a game. She played and won money from one guy who then convinced her to keep playing. She gave him 700 bucks with the understanding she would be getting it back plus some, but quickly changed her mind and asked for her money back. She told police he refused, stating a bet is a bet, but then told her he'd give her her money back if she had sex with him. And if she had sex with each of the guys in the group, she would get $1,000 each. She kept asking for her money back and he refused, saying he does this scam game for a living. We are in an area that has a lot of challenges um, and we deal with those challenges daily. Amid all the challenges and ongoing investigations, the hope is the holidays will help the remaining Boulevard businesses survive. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.